Hello YouTubes, welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales. Today we have a how-to video, specifically how to write a scientific paper. So this is mainly aimed at graduate or postgraduate students who potentially have an assignment where you need to write something in the form of a scientific paper, or maybe you've even done your own research and you're ready to publish in science for the first time, which is super exciting. Even if you've published before and you're watching this video, I hope that you can come up with some tips and tricks to maybe help you write more efficiently. So before I go any further, I need to make a big shout out to this video's sponsors, Nerdy Tutors. This is a new and innovative on-demand tutoring platform. It's super mobile friendly, so you can log on using your phone and you can start chatting to a tutor within minutes. They use these super smart algorithms to pair you with tutors to suit your needs. So whether you need help with your scientific writing style, whether it's mathematics, whether it's a biological logical concept, whether it's something in marketing, they have a tutor to suit your needs. And it's like having a Facebook Messenger. You log on, your tutor can explain concepts, they can share files with you. So it's super useful to students who need some help. If you're interested, please check out the link in the description box below and those who click on it will get $10 off of their first tutoring session. So without further ado, let's get into how to write a scientific paper. So I'm talking about a paper that follows the format of abstract, introduction, methods and materials, results and discussion. This is pretty much how most scientific papers are structured. I'm not really going to talk about what goes into each section because by now you should already know that. But I will talk about which sections to write first, how you should write them, a little bit about what you should include and some general tips and tricks so that you can write efficiently and you can produce an awesome scientific paper at the end of the day. So the first thing is what to write first, and this has to be your results section. Your results are the pivotal part of your paper and everything else revolves around it. If something in your results changes, then you have to change everything else from your methods to your discussion to your introduction. So this is a section that you really need to nail down first. And this is where you include all of your graphs and your tables that you've made to visualize your results. And you also include your text to explain your results. And it's just simple reporting, no discussion, nothing. Nothing like that. So a piece of advice I can give you for this section also has to do with your graphs and tables. Now data visualization is an art in and of itself and it takes a bit of practice to get it right. But a few things you can keep in mind is that you are trying to visually represent some of your results. You need to try and keep it as clean, concise and simple as possible but represent your results in a way that makes sense as soon as a reader sees it. So they look at your graph and they say, okay, this looks beautiful and I understand the result that you are trying to put across. Um, always make sure that your text in your graphs are big enough to be legible and try and make it as visually appealing as possible and you should be okay. So the next section that you write is really up to you. It can either be your methods and materials or your discussion. If you are not in a really good writing space and you just want to do something easy, get your methods and materials out of the way. This is a very simple section to write. You're really just, you know, recording what you did in a detailed enough manner so that somebody else can repeat your experiment or your data collection methodology or whatever. Um, generally, in the biological side of things, because you'll be working in a certain area, you describe your study site, then you describe how you collected your data, your experimental methodology, and then also very important, how you analyzed your data. But again, this is very simple, straightforward, just simply report what you did, um, you know, in a relatively short way and move on. So the next section is your discussion, which is a little bit more tricky. So I recommend doing this when you have like a good long writing block in front of you and when you're in a good writing mind space, because this is really where you take your results and you interpret them. Um, so you explain what you found and what some of the reasons behind these patterns might be. You relate it to what people have found before in the field, identify any similarities or differences and potential reasons behind these similarities and differences. This is also the so what of the paper. All right, we found these results, so what do they mean? And you have to make that clear. Also note the limitations of your study because every study is going to have its own limitations. So note that and you can also potentially talk about what future research could do to move on, you know, this, this study field. So everybody does it a little bit differently and it's a little bit down to personal preference and um, down to the field that you are in. But as I said, really just you need to relate it to what has come before, the so what, does it support your hypothesis or not, what are some of the potential reasons and you've got your discussion. 
So then you have your introduction, which is your last big section. Um, this is essentially the literature review part of the paper, and I've done a whole separate video on how to write a literature review, so I'm not really going to talk about much of that here. You can go watch that video if you want. But really, this is the section where you put your paper into context. You state your aims and hypotheses based on some of the gaps that have been identified in literature, and that's your simple introduction done. Then we have our abstract, which is your summary of your paper. So this is a, usually a maximum of 250 to 300 words. So you've got to keep it short and sweet. And this is what you do last, because as I said, this is a summary of your paper. So you need to have written your paper first before you can have your summary. And you really just need to put in one or two sentences describing each of your sections. So your introduction, your methods, your results, your discussion. Don't put in too much discussion and inferences. Really, you just want to report some of your main results and some of your main conclusions um, and the rest the readers can find in the discussion itself. So finally, I'm just going to give some general pieces of advice, um, specifically talking about your title first off. This is really what needs to grab your reader's attention. It has to be quite short, about 15 words, but descriptive enough so that your reader automatically looks at it and knows exactly what your study was about and whether um, he or she needs to read it or not. Always write in the past tense. This is something I still struggle with today and I often find myself shifting between present and past tense, but you are reporting on a study that you have already done, results you have already found, so you always need to make sure you're writing in the past tense. A big tip is to automate your references. You know, at the end of your paper, you have to have a reference list where you show all of the citations that you've used throughout your manuscript, and you don't want to be sitting there for hours writing this out by hand. So if you're using some sort of reference manager, like for myself, I use Mendeley. I've spoken about this before. There is a Microsoft Word plugin that will automatically generate your reference list for you. If you're using Latex, you can also automatically generate your reference list. So have a look at what software you're using, figure this out because you do not want to be sitting for hours wasting your time manually writing out your references. And my last piece of advice is always to remember that you have a specific aim and hypothesis, a specific topic that you are addressing in this paper and you always want to stay on topic. Don't go off on some random tangents here and there because, you know, people get bored when they're reading. So keep it on point, keep it on target. When you're writing, always refer back to that main aim, that main hypothesis and think, do I really need to include this sentence or the section into the manuscript? Try and keep it as short and concise as possible. And you'll have an amazing scientific paper at the end of the day, which hopefully you can get published. So that's it from my side. I hope you learned something useful in this video. Please give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If you're a scientist and you have any advice on how to write a scientific paper, please leave it down in the comments below for our watchers. And until next time, happy writing.